Welcome back. Uh, today we're going to look at something a little bit different from what we're used to dealing with here. Um, I was contacted uh, from a former coworker, someone who had retired and is now enjoying the good life. And uh, she had this unusual request. She has this, this uh, device that her child once used um, way back in the day. Now her child has grown with children of her own. And this is what I was asked to repair. This is a 19, early 1980s Coleco Pac-Man. Um, there's plenty of these things on YouTube. Um, you can see how they work. In fact, I, ha I was intrigued myself. I wanted to see exactly what I was getting myself into. So the issue at hand is actually quite common uh, with old electronic toys, especially, because they often get put away and forgotten about at some point in their lives. And this is what happened. Check this out. <laughs> these batteries, these old Duracell batteries just completely leaked everywhere. Now, I don't know how old these batteries are. These are prior to the introduction of the expiration date scheme that Duracell uh, implemented. So these batteries are probably somewhere in the uh, 25 to 30 year old range. That was stuck to the terminal. Um, made in USA, Bethel, Connecticut. Yeah, they don't have dates on them or lot numbers. So these are these are quite old. Yeah, I don't see lot numbers at all. That's uh, quite unusual. Wow, let's get rid of these. Um, there's no value in old batteries at all. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, these are probably from the early 90s, late 80s. But yeah, they've been around the block. Okay, so what do we got in here? Really not that much damage. Um, actually, I bet you I could put batteries in this thing and it'll fire right up. But I am going to clean up this corrosion. Um, but I was prepared to do severe reconnaissance here and uh, actually take these terminals and um, even remove them and clean them if I had to. But it does not look to be all that bad. We'll get. I should take it apart and just check to make sure there's no damage internally. I may just do that. But I don't think it's entirely necessary at this, at this point. It's neat. The, uh, the original owner even signed her name in an ink pen on a little uh, piece of tape or something on there. We'll leave that alone. I want to preserve as much of the originality of this thing as humanly possible. But yeah, there's a little bit of... No, it, it just came right off. Look, I'm seriously, this is, this is crazy. Um, there is no damage. These terminals are not even corroded. They're not damaged at all. That is... That is luck right there. That is luck. And I don't see, I can see internally, I can see the circuit board there, and I don't see where anything had leaked in, into it. So I, I, I think this will just turn right on. What do you think? I have a can of uh, canned air here somewhere I could probably use to, no, that's good. That's pretty good. And we'll clean the door. I don't know when uh, production ended for these. I know they were, as far as I know, these were um, released right around the same time as the original Pac-Man uh, during what was a time period in history known as Pac-Man fever, which afflicted many, 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 almost probably a high percentage of, uh, of the young population. They did survive Pac-Man fever, but anyway. Um, I see a little cutout in this door for maybe an external power supply of some kind. A little cutout there. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't seem to line up with anything. And there's no plugs in here, so... Okay. Alright. Let's, uh... Let's clean it up a little bit more. I'll get this... Oh, that in the laundry. 
Uh, the decals on this are in pretty good shape, but you can see where it's possible that the original adhesive had degraded and uh, turned to mush. That does happen. These things happen. But I'm not going to clean it too much because I don't want to ruin what's left of these labels. The, uh, the actual playboard is made of a plastic, a laminated plastic label, which is nice. That will hold up for many, many years. But the rest of the decals in the cabinet are uh, just paper decals, and um, they're not laminated at all. So... I imagine the reason that they want this fixed is so that the, uh, the children of the original owner can enjoy what analog joys can come <laughs> from the uh, these earlier electronic toys. And in many cases, I think they're more fun than a modern toy. Oh, let's see if I can get that little bit of corrosion out of there. You know, I'm gonna pull the bottom cover off. That's what you guys wanna see anyway, so. Yeah, um, these, uh, I, I think these toys are a lot more fun than today's electronics because they were, they were purpose built. This was built to do one thing and one thing alone. So you can chase a little yellow guy around a field and eat things. Whereas in today's society, it's not uncommon to just hand the kid an iPad and hope for the best. That's, that's, that's how, uh, unfortunately, that's how I'll kids today expose electronic pleasures through the, uh, through the screen of an iPad, and, and that's no fun. I'll bring it back. Alright, I'm back. Let's see if this screwdriver fits. Oh, there we go. We'll just, um, there's something still in there, and I want to get it out of there. It's amazing how this machine which is now almost 40 years old. I'm sure it still works. We never, we don't really know that yet, though. We didn't turn it on yet, <laughs> but we'll get there. We'll get there. Made in USA. I just noticed that. Coleco made in USA. No kid today will ever get to see that on anything. I can see it now. The kid who ends up with this game. Mommy, what does made in USA mean? What does that mean? Where is that? Is that part of China? <laughs> Okay, so, yeah, there we go. So watch out, anytime you take anything apart from the 80s with the battery compartment, remember, they did not use push fit connectors back then. Everything is soldered, so if you take this off, be very careful, you will break. You will break those solder connections, guaranteed. Get your money back. So let's get whatever the hell was in there out. Check out the speaker. That is an unusual. I've never seen anything like that before. There we go. So we got that chunk of... of uh, so copyright 1982. This thing is about one or two years older than I am, if I were to hazard a guess as to when it was made. The board is a, it's like a second revision board, so... Uh, yeah, revision D, actually, so... Fourth revision, copyright 1982. The original game is from 1981. I'm gonna get a can of compressed air. We're gonna blow that out. Okay. Well, turns out I ran out of compressed air, so that won't be possible. But that's okay. It's fine. All right. So the board. It's held in by two screws, three screws. It's just a single board device. Nice. You can see how they really engineered it so that it could be built on one board. That's clever. All right, 
I think we're good here. Yeah, definitely. Hmm. I kind of wonder where Coleco's factory was. Probably in the Midwest somewhere. That's where all the cheap labor was in this country. Somewhere in the Midwest, usually. It was, uh, somewhere in the south, maybe. So this locks in like that, and then you just press down. Very easy to assemble, very easy to work on. And if anything ever went wrong with this, you really wouldn't have a hard time fixing it. Um, I didn't see the other side of the board, so and I don't know what the uh, electrolytic capacitor situation looks like, but I don't imagine it would be very difficult to deal with if there were a problem. I am actually, and I'm, I'm seriously blown away that this was made in the U.S. I, uh, I can't say I'm, I'm shocked, but I'm surprised. I am, I'm a little surprised. I mean, 1980, early 80s manufacturing in this country was still, was, it was still, you know, by, by that I mean a small electronics and toys and stuff. You know, I remember when I was a kid, and I was born in 84, so when I was, when I was younger, I had um, several toys that were made here, uh, but they were usually plastic toy cars. And I think my early Hot Wheels might have been as well. But there just isn't really a toy manufacturing uh, industry in this country anymore. There, there really, it really was a big deal here. I mean, um, and now it's just a niche industry, like handmade wooden toys, stuff like that. But you never see electronic toys like this, which were meant to capitalize on on a. Um, on a pop-up trend like Pac-Man or Pokemon or something. You never see anything like that made here because it's just not cost-effective for what this thing would have sold for new. Okay, now that we've discussed the economics of manufacturing, let's, let's put batteries into this thing and see what she can do. So I, I believe the, uh, the person I'm, I'm helping out with this, she took the battery cover off to put batteries in it and she was a bit horrified, afraid that it might get damaged. So I think it's great though, you know, that something like this has survived the test of time and people still care about it. You know, I, I think that's great. Unfortunately, anything made today, and a lot of it is, you know, internet dependent vaporware won't be around this long to be appreciated by, you know, the next generation of kids. And that's really sad, actually. It's, that's, that's incredibly sad. I mean, you think about just the iPad 1, for example, the first iPad, it's already useless. You can't do anything with it. Okay. Screen lit up. Here we go. And you have to select, so the, the playing, I'm going to zoom in on this. This is actually kind of neat. The playing field is all made from LEDs. This is a board of nothing but LEDs. That's light emitting diodes, for those of you who do not know. Um, there's LCDs, liquid crystal displays, and LED displays. This is an example of an LED display. And I have a calculator here somewhere that also has an early LED display, but it's not here anymore. So we got to select the game, Pac-Man. There's your scoreboard, all made of LEDs. Here's the Pac-Man figure, and he's not moving. Is he dead? Oh, maybe there is a problem. Oh, okay, yeah, I see. Oh, not quick enough. I may have to... Yeah, it's working. I got eight and again. This is pretty cool. <laughs> I like that display. That is um, that is very clever. Uh, 
clay technology. I mean, it's three colors, blue, yellow, red, all made of LEDs. That's impressive. You know, it's not dissimilar from a modern OLED, an organic LED display. Oh, wow. A modern OLED is going to be made a little bit better than that, but let me rephrase that. I'm not thinking. That display is, if you think about it, is kind of like an early version of an OLED display. Well, not really. Hear me out. An OLED display is basically a panel made of um, tricolor uh, LEDs and they're controllable in brightness and intensity just like the phosphors on a CRT would be um, but they're so small that they form pixels well this is kind of like a an example of an, an LED display <laughs> a multicolor LED display now by that I mean it, it's not really a true multicolor display because each element in this display is one color and one color only. It cannot combine colors to produce a different color. Um, but the concept is there. Yeah. All right. I'll let it go like that. Eat and run. What's that? Eat and run. What am I supposed to do besides not die? Oh, there's, okay, there's little, oh wow, is it, there's little fruits, like cherries, like in Ms. Pac-Man, that I have to eat without getting killed. I may, I may take this apart and clean the, um, yeah, I think we should look at that. I'm thinking cleaning these contacts might make gameplay a little better. Um, so maybe we'll take it back apart for that. Mm, I'm not sure I want to. You know what? That's not necessary. It's really just so. Here's what one, 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 one. <laughs> the one way to test whether or not that would be effective is to turn it on and just trigger the switch in any direction. Yeah. There's, so that. So the down position works flawlessly. Left. Right. Yeah, there's nothing wrong. There's no need to take it apart any further. Yeah. It's just the gameplay isn't, um... How can I put this? Um, it also has two-player mode, too. This is head-to-head. -head. Control it with two different... It's just, you know what it is? Oh, I got him. What about this other Pac-Man? So I'm controlling the other Pac-Man, which is over here. The other joystick. And it's working fine. So, okay, let's explain why we're getting lag. So, whatever microprocessor is controlling this is severely limited. It's probably like a maybe a one or a four bit processor. So it can only address during each clock cycle so much. So um, whenever I trigger the Pac-Man to move up, if there's other elements that are loading in that cycle, it isn't really, you know what I mean? It's not, it's not reacting as quickly as I think it should. It does not indicate a malfunction, it just means that, um, you know, it's, it's basically a boiled down, very inexpensive version of a Pac-Man console. So, you know, you get, what you, you get what you get. I'm gonna take this, don't worry, unused toothbrush. I'm gonna clean inside here. <sighs> kind of gunky in there. I looked at pictures on the, of this machine online and there are no rubber or plastic knobs that go over here. Uh, that kind of caught me off guard. I thought there would be like little rubber balls or something, but no, this is how it was made. 
cost cutting at, at, at its finest right there. Um, but yeah, 1980s technology still works many, many, many years later, while modern technology wouldn't stand a chance. And I guess that concludes our video. Sorry it wasn't a more in-depth repair video, but I'm actually kind of glad it wasn't because I really don't want to tear apart one of these on a Saturday. So, I gotta contact the owner and say, hey, <laughs> the 80s are back. Or did they never leave us? I don't know. You be the judge.